everybody, welcome back to Moscow and welcome back to the Moscow Mules. I'm Shane Bowes, I'm still here, and so is my intrepid buddy, uh, Augie, uh, Professor of Disinformationology at the Disinformation Center for Counter Disinformation at Moscow State University of Disinformation. Of course, that doesn't exist, but I'm going to pretend it does, like they do in the West. And this week, we're going to take a trip around the globe, lifting the lid on the grubbiness, the nastiness, the stealing, the fakery and the crookery, and of course, this month, this Pride Month. Now, the Russians had their Pride Month uh, last month, May, May the 9th in particular, when most Russians were very proud of the soldiers, the men and women who formed the backbone of a great nation, looking back over their glorious history. But in Europe and in the USA, if you're unlucky enough uh, to have to be forced into watching grown men and women with their testicles and uh, titty bits hanging out, <laughs> walking down the mainstream in your town uh, with uh, their asses dipped in uh, multicolored paint, uh, you'll know all about Pride Month. And it's, a, it's all about choice after all. Uh, isn't that right, Ogie? Now, Ogie, of course, is not gay. There are actually no gays in Russia. Uh, not gay. Ogie is gay, but his boyfriend is. We don't have any gays here in Russia. Uh, it's absolutely gay free. So Gay Fest starts in Philadelphia, Philly. Philadelphia cream cheese, you might be slightly put off. Uh, and it starts with a drag queen uh, event. Basically middle-aged men, uh, some of them obese, dressed as women with uh, gaudy makeup. Uh, I'm not talking about your ex-girlfriends, I'm talking about uh, the Philadelphia drag queen event. And even the Guinness Book of Records was asked to attend. They wanted to make it the biggest storytelling event where these uh, chubby checkers in uh, you know cheap uh, outfits uh, tell stories to little kids most of them are kids about 286 of them are children right on you so i wanted to talk about uh censorship for just a second because <laughs> uh, you understand that you can't find me on youtube if you search on that cybersecurity guy even on well if you got to remember google owns youtube if you search for that cybersecurity guy at google you're not going to find me so if you're watching this video on youtube you know they're, they're already demonetized, you know, but uh, I, this was a new one on me because I got a... And by the way, I don't get the comments. I, you know, I watch the Economic Ninja and he's... A lot of YouTubers, your comments disappear. So if you're making comments on YouTube, it's a very rare occasion that I'll get your comment. So what I want to tell you is go over to The Burn. The Burn on Rumble. Go to The Burn on Rumble. Or you can go up on X, you can hit on my profile. I'm at that cyber sec, SEC guy on, on X. All right, that's the two best places to find me. I, I do do the world burning on uh, Telegram, but I don't post there very often because uh, I'm just, you know, I don't know my way around Telegram to get the views there. All right, so I just wanted to throw that out. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, June 10th, 2024, let's get into it. So the, uh, the first story was, uh, I was, of course, out for a hike today, and all I heard on the radio was this tremendous uh, military operation where the Israelis went in and they conducted this wonderful military operation where they rescued uh three was it three or well, i think it was three uh hostages maybe that might have been four uh you know but but i think you know and and that's all you heard on on mainstream media on right wing radio left wing radio i mean that's all you heard but you know what i'm like paul harvey let's just get right into it let's get to the rest of the story. Now, I wouldn't like you to have the impression that these hundreds of thousands on the streets to get rid of Netanyahu want a more humane uh, policy towards the Palestinians. That's very definitely not true. I wouldn't like you to think that Benny Gantz would be any better than Benjamin Netanyahu because that is very definitely not true. In fact, you could make a case that Netanyahu is the least extreme member of his current cabinet. Just think about that. The situation in Gaza yesterday went from bad to worse. The worst day of the war was 
yesterday, in the middle of a British general election, in the middle of an American presidential election, the policies of both American and British governments towards the conflict in Gaza are right at the center of public discourse, if not media discourse, in the election in both countries. 274 refugees in the Nusrat refugee camp in central Gaza. 274 people were killed. 75% of them women and children. They were murdered by gunfire or by bombs. The Israeli Air Force flattened the camp with bombs and a group of Israeli commandos who came in via the United States pier that they built for humanitarian purposes in Gaza were smuggled in under the cover of being aid. The trucks came in purporting to be full of food and medical supplies for the stricken, famine stricken, ailing people of the Gaza Strip, but in fact they were filled with Israeli gunmen who dismounted from the trucks and massacred everyone that they saw. They massacred small children, they massacred bigger children, they massacred women, they massacred men, they massacred anybody, everybody that they saw. And the death toll is only half of the story. 274 were killed, but 700, 700 were wounded, maimed, many of them forever. I just saw a figure that 16,000 Palestinian children have died in the last eight months at the hands of the Netanyahu murder gang. But twice that number, 32,000 Palestinian children have had their limbs amputated. And I've now just saved on my phone a picture the likes of which I never imagined that I would see. A small Palestinian child in Gaza, dead in the mouth of a dog. The dogs are feasting on the bodies in Gaza. And what a feast they had yesterday. I'm spending more time than usual on that point for this reason. I have watched the British media and I understand the American media is even worse. I've watched the British media on this all day and every single outlet has treated what happened in Nusrat camp yesterday as a triumph, as a kind of raid on Entebbe, as a kind of adventure story. When in fact, it was an act of criminal lawlessness, illegal under every article of war, illegal under the Geneva Conventions, illegal under the uh, laws against crimes against humanity. This use of firepower from the air and from the land, killing and maiming the best part of 1,000 people to rescue four hostages is an extraordinary indictment on our own media and on the Israeli state itself. But here's the rub. Even if they don't care about the Palestinian blood that was shed in oceans yesterday in a refugee camp where everyone in it is a responsibility of the so-called international community under international law, the ocean of Palestinian blood wasn't mentioned, but neither was the fact that the Israeli terror gang also slaughtered three other hostages. They murdered 274 people, maimed 700 people, and murdered three of their own hostages, one of them an American citizen. This has been completely blacked out of the media coverage of this event is being treated as a kind of Super Bowl event, when in fact it is a war crime. It is a war crime to kill hundreds of people 
to recapture three of your own, two of whom were Israeli soldiers. Most of you have been led to believe that these Israeli hostages were young women just strolling down the street. Two of the three were Israeli soldiers, prisoners of war. And the third was the chief security officer at the Nova Music Festival, which was a target in the end for the Palestinian resistance groups when they broke out of the concentration camp on October the 7th. And many people were killed there. Many of them were killed by the Israeli forces themselves. Many, no doubt, were killed by the organizations, not just Hamas, but many organizations involved in that concentration camp breakout on October the 7th. So the three that they rescued were all security people, two of them military prisoners of war. The three who they killed included an American tourist with an American passport in their pocket. And the American government has hailed the operation as an unqualified success. And nobody gives a toss about the 1,000 Palestinian refugees, 1,000 who were either murdered or maimed in that attack. And therein lies the problem we have. It's reportedly helped the IDF in its actions against the Nuzera refugee camp and the operation to recover the Israeli hostages. That's according to American media, citing a military official in Washington. Now, footage on social media allegedly shows the Israeli military using the American-made temporary pier in central Gaza during its offensive. A U.S. military unit reportedly accessed the territory by hiding on a truck that was supposedly delivering humanitarian aid for Palestinians. Former Pentagon senior security policy analyst Michael Malouf says the U.S. assistance breaks Palestine's trust in Washington, which can influence the negotiation process. Actually, they were special forces to, uh, to go in for the rescue mission. Uh, this, this once again reinforces the hypocrisy on the part of the United States. So there was apparently, again reportedly, uh, a, a U.S. Uh, special ops team that went in to assist the Israelis in this endeavor. And when you use the pier for that purpose, the question is, is this... The Palestinians themselves will no longer trust anything the United States does. And if it was meant to be for humanitarian aid, yeah, they'll bring in a few trucks with humanitarian aid on it. But every once in a while, you can then, now from now on, count on them using that pier to gain direct access for their special ops for the United States. So, um, again, uh, that level of trust. Uh, and this is going to reflect, by the way, on, uh, on whether Hamas agrees or, or trusts the United States to live up to the agreements and, to, and for even Israel to live up to the agreements. And so the, the level of trust has, has uh, um, just absolutely evaporated. And so, uh, and this is, and if you wanted to have negotiations and what have you, this is not a good climate for that. So that was George Galloway. I always want to give him credit. I tell you what, I don't know how he gets all his information. I, re I was recorded the video earlier today, and then, of course, I come home. <laughs> and I, get, I watch George, and I'm like, oh, all my numbers are wrong. I haven't got all the information. I knew it was 200. I had no idea that the, the massacre that took place, that, that the genocide that the Israelis conducted in that op, and to know that there were American commandos on the ground. Oh, my God. I mean, uh, what, why are the Amer I mean, the Democrats are the most evil people on the planet. They want, I mean, Arabs, man, the Democrats want you all dead. I mean, I hope you understand that. Of course, they want all the Palestinians dead. Anyway, let's uh, let's just get into a couple of tweets, and then we'll get into uh, some hiking parts of the video. Well, actually, let's uh, let's watch a Palestinian protest uh, that was taking place. Let's watch that.
happening all around the world. I hope you understand that. And there's actually one going on. I'm, I didn't record it. I just it looked kind of silly because the numbers didn't look that great. But there, it's taking place around the White House. They're trying to surround it with these red curtains. Uh, and they're, of course, they're, they're chanting the, the tired old slogan, free, free, Palestine, free, free. I would say end the genocide, end the genocide. <laughs> that's what I'd be chanting, you know, but I, that's just me. You know, I think they need to change up free, free Palestine because uh, it doesn't seem like nobody gives a shit about the Palestinians. And uh, anyway, you saw George Galloway on there. Uh, there was uh, one other video. God dang it, I can't remember what it was about. But let's watch that one now. Let's get into the hiking video and then I'll cut into the bookmarks. So if you didn't know, mark this date on your calendar, June 9th, 2024. The day the petrodollar died. If you didn't know, Saudi Arabia has told the United States that they are no longer going to accept. Well, they didn't tell the United States. They just told they are willing to accept other currencies in payment for their oil. So they're gonna accept Japanese yuan. They're probably gonna to continue to accept US dollars from the United States. Uh, and if another country wants to pay in US dollars, I'm sure they'll take it. Uh, they're gonna accept rubles, I'm sure, from Russia. So they're gonna accept currencies from all around the world. And as the world continues de-dollarization, it's a big deal, man. I mean, if you don't know the history, Nixon took us off the gold standard. I wanna say it was 1973 and then uh, Kissinger went over and he negotiated a deal with Saudi Arabia. By the way, you got to admire these other countries. They actually honor their agreements. I don't know why they agreed for 50 years, but they agreed for that for the next 50 years uh, that they would accept only accept US dollars for their oil. So basically the, that's what su supported the dollar all around the world because everybody had to trade with Saudi Arabia, the biggest oil producer in U.S. dollars. So, uh, you know, of course, anytime any other country like Iraq, Libya, or, uh, you know, said that they would accept other currencies or, you know, didn't want to take uh, dollars no more, we, we blew them up. <laughs> you know, I, don't think, I don't think we're going to blow up Saudi Arabia over this one, you know. So that's uh, another stake in the coffin. And I already reported on this yesterday, you know, China sold, what, $53 billion more in treasuries, you know, record number. So they're de-dollarizing. They were, they were at like $6 trillion. Now they're down to, uh, I think it's $600 billion in treasuries. So everybody's getting rid of their treasuries. So soon, the only people buying U.S. debt is the Federal Reserve, <laughs> you know, which means they're just going to print more money, which means hyperinflation. So hold on to your jack straps. Uh, it's... I don't think it's going to happen right away, but, you know, it's going to... Well, you already got tremendous inflation right now. So, uh, the other huge news story was uh, I saw in the news that a lot of... Well, I mean, I don't know how they're projecting this, because I think the election's not over. Well, I guess it is going to be over uh, tonight. Anyway, there are a lot of uh, nationalists, populist nationalists, have won in Europe. So, they must have pretty fair elections over there, unlike the United States. Uh, because if they can elect in, uh, you know, because they got a lot of left-wing lunatics in those countries, Macron being one of them, 
By the way, if you go look up Macron's comments, he's, he's saying the same thing that, that the Democrats say, that this, this is the end of democracy as they know it in Europe because the nationalists are taking over. Oh my God, these left-wing lunatics. Uh, but anyway, I think it's a good thing. So I'm glad to see that they're going to have more representative government in a lot of places in Europe, which is going to really help them out. They're not going to just fork over $500 billion dollars to Ukraine of uh, their tax money anymore, like the United States is still continuing to do. I think our last package was what, 225 million, you know. And you got to understand, that's just uh, printed, printed currency. A lot of Americans they don't understand. We're just racking up the debt. That you know, well, it's not even even. I mean, I can't even look at it as debt anymore. It's just phony money. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's currency, man. Uh, oh my goodness gracious. So that was the next story. So I thought about what I was talking about with trees. And uh, I don't know if you knew, the Russians, they take their treaties very, very seriously. And, uh, and so do, uh, well, obviously Saudi Arabia did. They actually honored a 50-year agreement with the United States before they ever uh, decided to take other currencies. I mean, that's a pretty damn big commitment in sticking to your, your, your principles. Whereas the United States, uh, when we made the uh, the Minsk Accords back in what I want to say it was was it 2014? That was when the coup took place in Ukraine. But it, the Minsk Accords probably I think it came about a little bit later than that. And uh, and then then of course the Western leaders bragged that it was about hoodwinking the Russians so that they could arm up Ukraine to the teeth. It was never about peace. The Minsk Accords, and so they they they. Basically, they said that they pulled the wool over the Russians' eyes, and they were bragging about it. I mean, that's how that's how corrupt and stupid the West is. They, you know, so you can't believe anything, any treaty that the West, especially the United States, we lie about everything. You know, and that's the way the world looks at us. But what I'm saying is, a lot of nations, when they actually enter into treaties, they honor the uh, the treaties. Now, you know, if you remember Reagan, he said, "Trust but verify." Okay, you know, but there used to be some trust. There ain't no trust in the United States no more, I can tell you that. Not after what we've done to the Russians. And then, of course, you know, the currency confiscated all that Russian money. I, I, if I was an, another nation in the world, I, I, I'd try to get away from dollars just as fast as I could, man. Uh, just as fast as I could. I'm trying to think of another treaty that got honored. Uh, anyway, I can't think of one other than, you know, the treaties, because there was actually two or three treaties that we signed with the Russians, and, uh, and then we lied about it. You know, it's one thing to say, like Trump did. Trump pulled out of the, stupidly, the interrange uh, ballistic missile treaty. You know, and Trump did some stupid things. I ain't gonna lie. That was a terrible thing to do. And I don't know why he did it or what his justification was for that. Because you know the Russians were honoring their half of the agreement. They take them seriously. But at least we pulled out. Pulling out of a treaty is one thing. You know, saying that you're honoring the treaty when you're not, and it becomes obvious that, you know, you're not honoring the treaty. And then bragging about the fact that you just, you made the treaty just to buy you some time so that, you know, you could weapon up, you know, and, and put uh, heavily armed Ukraine on the, on the border of Russia, uh, you know, trying to, uh, anyway, make a treaty. Yeah, I just, I, I, it's crazy, man. The United States has lost its mind. To get into a little bit more detail about the European elections, by uh, breaking news, French President Macron has announced he's dissolving Parliament and will hold a snap election. This comes after the right-wing national rally led by uh, Marine Le Pen got a massive victory in the EU elections projected to win 31.5% of the votes. Bad. Things are, I mean, I guess in Europe, they must have fair elections. You know, I, I did a video yesterday. If you want to find out how our elections are rigged in the United States, go watch that video, man. I mean, it was, it's terrible here in the United States. Uh, let's keep going. Two right-wing German politicians were attacked. You know, it's always on the right or the nationalist or the populist uh, politicians that get attacked by these left-wing lunatics. You never hear, I, I, have you seen a, a single event where a MAGA Republican has attacked a politician or anybody? Uh, 
They should. I mean, well, I shouldn't say they should. I mean, I, but I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, we're, we're, the country's being driven into a corner. I mean, once they unleash the illegal immigrants on the, uh, on the MAGA population or the Patriot population, if you want to look at it that way, I mean, we're going to have no choice but to fight back. But anyway, it's uh, two right-wing German politicians attacked with a baseball bat <laughs> by a far-left Antifa extremist. This comes shortly after two previous attacks against right-wing politicians. Sure. Why isn't this all over the news? Well, that's a good damn question. <laughs> you know? Heinrich Koch was stabbed multiple times by a far-left extremist, and Hans Jürgen Zickler was attacked during an election campaign. Four right-wing politicians have been attacked now. All right, let's keep going. This is Dr. Simon Goddick, and this gets back... By the way, I was listening to the broadcast today. Uh, the, the numbers that are coming out about vaccine injuries are astronomical. I mean, they were did a, uh, a big study up in Washington State, and I mean, it's a thousand a percent increase in the number of uh, uh, fatalities, you know, excess fatalities at, at, since we got the jab. Now, can, can they say that the jab caused it? Well, I mean, you can kind of just say, well, before the jab, the numbers were this, then you had COVID, and then you had the jab, and then the numbers became this. You know why I don't get experimental vaccines now? <laughs> I mean, but anyway, this is Dr. Simon Goddard. Remember when they argued that COVID vaccines would have to be free because they were allegedly life savings? This begs the question, why aren't insulin shots free? Well, that's, that's a good question. I would say insulin shots are much more important than, than COVID shots, at least now, uh, now that the, vac the virus has run its course. Uh, this keeps entertaining the masses. <laughs> this is funny as hell. You ever watch these commentators on CNN or MSDNC or uh, NBC, ABC, CBS, uh, any of the, the, the even even Fox News? And and this this would be something that you would hear on one of them channels. And I, that's why I included this because I don't even know where they put. Uh, there's no either. These people are just totally ignorant. They're just lying out there through their teeth, or they're just dumb as hell or they just want to make some money and just regurgitate whatever the CIA propaganda machine gives to them. But listen to this. Ukraine is confidently winning. This was announced by the head of the NATO military committee, Admiral Rob Bauer. B -A -U I, I would just sick up to my stomach if I said this, by the way, as a military soldier. I, it just it, there's no credibility left in these people. In fact, how did how would you get a job with the company that had any integrity whatsoever? I, well, I guess they don't have to, because uh, you know the Democrats give people like this jobs. According to him, the Russians have not achieved any of their strategic goals. The mighty Russian army could not defeat the much smaller army of Ukraine. Dot, dot, dot. There's a section missing here. I, I don't know what what that would be. Ukraine is not only winning but is also capable of returning half of the territories that Russia conquered. The American military command encourages the Ukrainians. That's just so flipping ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I want to comment. Uh, this is uh, Doug Dmitry Medenev. I mean, I tell you, he's always on Twitter. I, and I, I love how he, he gets into this stuff. How great it feels to receive acknowledgement of the effectiveness of our combat effort against the neo-Nazi regime in Kiev. Yeah. It came from bastardly organizations such as the NGOs belonging to the disgusting old geezer Soros, 
Who turned? I agree with that, man. That guy's like evil Palatine, isn't he from from Star Wars? Who turned the ICC over to our humble work? Such NGOs. Well, and what he's talking about is the ICC. You know, they're ruling on Putin. Everybody was cheering them, but you know, now that they've ruled on Israel, uh, the West is condemning them, especially the United States. So now, you know, Russia looks good. China looks good. The rest of the world respects the ICC and the United States and some of the Western countries. By the way, Schultz lost today in the elections. Maybe such NGOs and their masters are accomplices of the terrorists who killed more than 20 of our peaceful citizens just yesterday. That really motivates to keep us working against the foul Nazi clique. We will be even angrier the more ruthless and deadly while exposing all kinds of assholes and cunts of the Bandera regime and their patrons. And then it says something in Russian. I guess I could try it. Igni Atku Fero Vastare. Whatever that means in Russian. Well, I think I might have done this in a previous video, but I'll go ahead. Uh, former Mossad officer, Haim Tonar, a large-scale war with Hezbollah would undermine Israel's ability to function as a state. Total war poses a threat to the Zionist vision. If war breaks out, Hezbollah's missile will paralyze, he, missiles will paralyze Israel, including Ben Gurion and Hafia airports. The widespread war will make the fate of Acre, Hafia, Tiberias, Tiberias, and possibly Tel Aviv, similar to Kriyat Simonoa. Hezbollah has precision missiles that can blow up Israeli gas fields in a matter of seconds. The Air Force can no longer operate freely over Lebanon due to the detection system Iran provided to Hezbollah. We are a fateful, we are at a, a fateful historical crossroads and must accept Biden's proposal. Well, they ain't, <laughs> they ain't gonna accept Biden's proposal. The Zionists are gonna fight to the last Zionists until they had, and then launch their nuclear weapons. This is a cool a little tidbit, just off the off of the wall. Breaking news, Oklahoma rejects the WEF agenda. The state just voted in a new law ensuring they will not enforce any of the mandates issued by the UN, WHO, or WEF. I mean, that's massive, you know. So I thought that was pretty cool. Solving the task of the special military operation can be accredited, uh, can be accelerated, but the lives of military important personnel are more important. That's a quote from Putin. So you wonder why the war is kind of churning along really slow. It's because Putin wants it that way. Well, plus, I mean, you know, he's trying to, to keep it from going nuclear. The West, you know, is, is, is doing all kinds of crazy shit. And so he figures as long as he just keeps grinding down, grinding down, grinding down, you know, killing. I, what, what was it they said? I can't remember. It's like a thousand Ukrainians a day or 50. It might be 50,000 a month that they're killing right now. I mean, how many more Ukrainians are left to be thrown into the fight? <laughs> you, know, you can only grab so many people off the street and just bring them up to the front line with four days of training. You know, so uh, I, I guess they, they figure that, you know, if they put every last Ukrainian up there, maybe the Russians will run out of weapons. I, I don't think that's going to be the case. Oh, wasn't that cool? All right. So there you go. All right. And then last, uh, Dmitry Mc Medvedev pointed out Putin yesterday for the first time allowed Russian weapons to be sent to regions at war with the states, peace out, stay free.